So I'm going to be using uh, an iPad here. Um, a lot of these same apps are available for the iPhone and for Android or something very similar. Um, I'm just going to touch on a few of the kind of things you can do with your mobile device. Uh, the, um, just going to start off with, you know, if, if anybody's been in an Apple store within the last few years, uh, you've probably seen Star Walk on one of their iPads. Um, it's a uh, very nice program. It kind of got a big boost because it was on the, um, the, all right, let's get right side up here. That must be one of those ones I got to do that way. Um, uh, got a little uh, boost by just being on the, the iPad, so everyone kind of downloaded it, but there's lots of other good programs. I'm going to show you uh, uh, one of them. Uh, there's various classes of uh, uh, programs, uh, uh, you know, like planetarium programs like this one, um, where you can kind of move around the sky and zoom in. So the software is good for planning what you're going to go do for the evening or take out with you and help you with what you're doing. Um, what's great about what the iPhone and the iPad is uh, being able to um, use the internal mechanisms like the gyroscope and the compass to have it point for you. So as soon as you kind of hold your device up, it follows the sky. So if you need help in discovering what's up there, it can kind of point you in the direction. So you can see I'm kind of pointed north. I go over here, I can point east, and you can see that the moon is, has already risen above the horizon. What Star Walk also allows you to do is get a little help in orienting yourself. You can see a little icon at the upper, well actually it doesn't show up here, interesting. Um, it's a little icon up here in the corner with a camera shutter, and when I turn that on, uh, all right, well, fine, I didn't realize it would do that. You can, uh, it'll actually display through the camera what's in the background. It's called augmented reality, so it kind of turns your device into a heads-up display. So if you see, you know, a couple objects in the sky and it's like, well, which one is it? You can kind of point at it and zoom, and it's like, oh. So that's uh, Venus or Sirius, if they happen, you know, uh, which direction you're looking in. Um, the, uh, there's other things you can kind of do on here. Uh, you can uh, check other settings. Um, hmm. Oh, I, I, got it. I just noticed it's like the Orionids. It's kind of showing you the location of a meteor shower, you can just see out the little things kind of yeah. spiking out there. You can go forward in time. You unfortunately can't see the controls that I can, which I didn't realize wasn't showing up on the external display. Um, stop. And uh, or get, just get some basic information about what's in the sky tonight, which is also not showing up. So I'm going to switch over to another program. Starwalks, it's a great program. Um, there are two different versions, one for iPhone, one for iPad. Uh, the one that I am partial to is Sky Safari. And basically because uh, I'm the reason, I'm told I'm the reason it exists. Uh, the developer came to the magazine one time and was, uh, you know, Sky Safari was, you know, on the uh, Mac and PC. Um, and when the developer came into the office one day, he said, uh, I told him, it's like, so when are you going to make a you know, version for the iPhone? And he kind of went, I don't know. And then it came out. And the next time I saw him, it's like, you know, it's like, oh, well, it's really good. And he's like, oh, well, you're the reason we decided to make it, because we started thinking about it after I talked to you. Um, so I like uh, this one. Um, like I said, it has its origins for, uh, on a, a, a laptop and a Mac uh, program that was originally called... Uh, uh, Voyager, and then it kind of merged with another program that a uh, um, uh, fellow from another software company made, and they sort of you know joined forces. But this one's showing me uh, showing a, a little bit better because it's showing you some of the the options you can do below. Um, 
So you can kind of search for anything. So if you want to know what planets are up, you can select planets. So you can see the highlighted ones. You know, Venus, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto are up. They still consider Pluto a planet, which is good for some people. <laughs> um, comets, as David was mentioning, uh, Comet Ison is uh, heading our way. So this has a lot of comets in, in the list here. But we can make it a little easier on ourselves by actually just searching for it. And there's some information. And if I hit center, it'll show us that it's below the horizon. <laughs> but, I, but I can always turn off the horizon. Um, just do it a transparent line and done. And there you can see it. It's actually right near Mars. I don't know if you saw the news recently where uh, the spacecraft and uh, rovers on Mars were going to try to image the comet. And I think they successfully did, didn't they? I haven't seen them yeah, yet. Yeah, I don't remember. I don't recall. Maybe it was because of the shutdown. Maybe you haven't seen them yet. <laughs> yeah, um, those rovers were federal employees. <laughs> so likewise, this one you can kind of go into uh, orientation mode. You can kind of zoom in a ways and it gets a little more precise. Uh, precise. There's some sound effects. <laughs> I turned off the background music on Star Walk because, uh, you know, it's kind of nice, but not all that nice for long term. Um, and if you're using it outdoors, uh, you know, your telescope, sometimes you want to uh, preserve your dark adaptation. It's something we talk about up on the roof. So you can see down the bottom there, there's night mode. So it turns everything red. So uh, um, easy enough to take care of that. <laughs> but you can use it to find uh, deep sky objects. Uh, you know, stars, um, and adjust various things about uh, um, looking for. If you are kind of don't know what to look for, um, you can see a little indication down there. It says Sky and Telescope Sky Week. Uh, you can click on that. But there's also a separate app that you can download called Sky Week. And so this gives you a calendar, a day-by-day -day calendar of things that are going on. Um, this sort of, it's because Sky Safari, Sky Safari is sort of the base uh, planetarium software that they, that they use. So if I do view on any of these items, it's going to show me a, a representation of that. And if you want to get alerted, you can see there's a little calendar button by each entry. And I can add all these to the calendar that's built in. Um, one of the things that you can do with uh, Sky Safari as well is if you, if you find a planet where we're, I'm going to search for Saturn, even though it's below the horizon, I'm still going to center it. And then I can zoom in by just squeezing my finger, pinching apart. And you get that great detail. And you can actually see the moons around them and go through time as well. Um, if you just want a simple app that kind of does that, uh, there's several of them out there, but the Sky and Telescope makes a couple of them. One's called Jupiter's Moons. Uh, there's one for the Saturn's Moons as well. So that shows you the, the orientation of right this moment. Uh, you can, depending on your telescope, you can flip them and whichever matches your particular view. You tap on it, get a little closer in. And if you want to go through time, you can see how they orbit the planet. So, and you can see there's like a running list going over on the, on the bottom there. So it shows events like uh, when satellite transits and spots on uh, shadows on the, uh, on the planet itself. And the last thing, uh, well, I got a little time here. Uh, we, uh, I was hoping to use this uh, when, uh, at our moon event uh, last week. Uh, you can also get a nice lunar atlas. And um, 
This one is called Moon Globe. There's a few others out there. This one has uh, an option of just showing you what it looks like now. You can zoom in, and if you want to know what you're actually looking at, you can do put on the terrain, and it will label all the things for you. Ever wonder where all the spacecraft are on the planet, <laughs> on the moon? There they are. And the fun thing is you can go through time. Um, if any of you were here for the uh, David's talk about the moon, um, one of the he talked about was called libration, uh, and how the Earth, the, the, the moon's orbit around Earth isn't totally circular, so as it goes around, it kind of comes in and out. And you can show that just by going through time. Let's do it all. <laughs> so it shows you the phases, but you can actually see the moon kind of bobbing and weaving and whatnot. <coughs> so even if you're not using it, it's just kind of fun to play with. <laughs> And uh, it does give you the, uh, um, so the Earth, from Earth view, or you can kind of go from above the globe, which allows you to actually rotate the moon, get a good look at the North Pole, if you like. This is all from satellite imagery, so it's uh, very detailed. And the last thing I was going to show you is a program that I like called Sputnik. Um, I like observing you know, satellites going on the space station. There's also a thing called, uh, uh, things called iridium flares, which are bright glints off of uh, satellites. Um, this is an, an iPhone-only app. I don't know of a one that's for Android. And because it's um, iPhone-only, it's actually only that big on the iPad. But luckily, you can make it twice the size and fill up the screen. What this does is it searches the database, uh, it updates the orbital elements for the satellites, and gives you uh, when you'll be able to see events from your location. So there is a space station pass, a pretty low one, in uh, about 10 minutes uh, before um, the hour. And if you kind of select it, it'll give you a little bit more details. Uh, you can see it's already counting down for when it's going to rise. And if you want to know where it is, you turn the, your device on the side and it'll give you a little star map. You can, eh, but it doesn't show the right orientation. So turn your heads. <laughs> it looks right here. And you can see the Big Dipper um, kind of tail up there. So you can kind of get a good idea of where it's going to go. Um, so you can look at for satellites that are coming in. Uh, there's a nice good iridium flare at 5.30 in the morning, but I'm not going to wake up for that. So as I said, there's lots of other programs that you can get. Uh, there's lots of star chart types of programs. Some of them are free, some of them cost a little money. Sky Safari actually comes in three versions. Um, I think that's uh, like one buck, four bucks, or, or two bu three bucks, fifteen dollars, and forty dollars. And the extra money gets you a bigger database, so you get more stars. You know, you can get the, the higher up one that has every asteroid discovered. Um, uh, so uh, the, the worst part of it is trying to find them. Um, you can search the search the app stores for uh, uh, software. Stuart, thank you so much.